I, I was pretty frustrated with the situation back home in Pakistan. And I still am, unfortunately. I'm still worse and worse. And my, my sole reason was that I, I, was, I was frustrated because if 1% to 2% of the country pays taxes and 98% of them are actually living a life, this is not sustainable. The day my immigration came through, the next morning, I actually had my design on the table. And it wasn't too far out from uh, the time when I was about to get the bonus as well. Um, so, in short, um, it was not easy. I've, I've held a belief in my life that you can't be in two boats at the same time. Career, I was ready to work at Tim Hortons or Starbucks or anywhere, or maybe start three levels down from wherever I left. And I was actually fine with it because I came with the mindset in, in this Western society in terms of saying there's nothing wrong with you taking a few steps back if you want to grow and develop yourself. So how I landed a job, then soon someone guided me and said, look, you need to you need to find people, connections who work in good organizations, who can at least give a referral and referral and be very careful in using the word. Referral in Canada really means someone who can help you put your foot in the door, someone who knows that you're capable and competent enough and can put their name behind your resume and can actually, your, your CV can make it to the table of the hiring manager. Hello friends, uh, so thanks for joining for this podcast. Today, my dear friend I have on podcast is Kasim Chaudhary. Now Kasim, I know him from my college days. Uh, we were together in the college and then we went our ways. Life happened. Uh, kids, family, job, and eventually in 2017, I remember noticing Kasim moving to Canada, and that was the same time in January 2017 when I moved to Canada as well, and that's when we kind of reconnected. We did reconnect in between as well, but the claim to fame here is, and the reason I have Kasim on the podcast is that he's one of the most successful examples with regards to coming to Canada transitioning in Canada and settling down. And the reason I say successful is because I've mentioned in my podcast a lot of time that when you're coming to Canada, you should be ready for a career downgrade, one or two levels. One level, if you're lucky, or usually it's two levels. Plus, it's not it's not easy, as easy as it seems. There are a lot of nuances to it when you come, you move your family here, settle here. But Kasim is one example which I share with my friends and uh, with other followers as well or with family who's been really successful um, in terms of getting a job in terms of settling here now another piece which is great about him is that he's in hr which also helps on top which is he can advise us with regards to how others can find job others can come here settle in canada so we'll be talking to him about his experiences and his guidance and his tips and tricks with regards to how we can ace the canadian immigration so before moving into any questions uh, that I will ask you, Kasim, if you can kind of uh, share a few words from your side as well, anything that I may have missed, and uh, then we, we can move forward. Maybe slightly introduce yourself as well, where you work, uh, what is your designation and all, that would be nice to know. And then I'll move into some questions that I have for you. Awesome. Thank you very much. And hi, friends. Uh, I'll be very transparent with you. This is the first time ever I've shown up on social media. Barrows has been off to me for, I don't know, four months now, Barrows. And I was very conscious on, on not showing up in the social media. And it's nothing to do with the social media, so it's just me, myself. But I'm happy to be here. I really appreciate it. And, I humble, uh, uh, and I'm very humbled by the comments that you've made, Barrows. Yeah, I know we go a long way. Uh, I've had my own journey. Um, and we'll talk a lot more. I'll try to be as transparent as I can. Uh, I, I would love to share my own experiences, and I do want to put a caveat on that. Uh, when, when we talk about experiences later on in the podcast, is whatever I'm saying, folks, is my own experience. And I believe every single person who has landed in Canada or a job or made well for themselves or not too well has their own stories. Like we say, we are actually a product of our own experiences. So whatever you hear, uh, please uh, absorb that with a pinch of salt. Um, and it's just me speaking. So quickly, uh, to your question, Bero, I'll introduce myself. I think you know my name. My name is Kasim. Um, and uh, I work for a wonderful organization called TD Bank. It's called Toronto Dominion Bank Group uh, as the Associate Vice President Human Resources. I've been with the bank for about, uh, this is my seventh year, and I'm loving it to bits. 
That's great. And thanks. Thanks for that introduction. So let's quickly jump in, Kasim. So uh, why did you decide to immigrate to Canada? What was that decision like and uh, why why immigrate at all? And if immigrate, why Canada? So um, it was a very conscious decision, I would say. And many people that know me, my family and otherwise, knew back in the day when I started my career with Pakistan Tobacco and then I worked for ICI and then Standard Chartered, I was always eyeing on an opportunity to move abroad. First, I tried to move abroad through any of the international convents. I had an opportunity to travel to South Korea, Seoul for a few months for international assignments, but that was a short one. So I always thought that there's a much better, bigger world out there that we should go out, explore. Um, that was really the objective. And, and the second thing I want to share is, and please folks, this is for you friends who are listening to this. That's again, my view. I, I, I was pretty frustrated with the situation back home in Pakistan. And I still am, fortunately, and it's getting worse and worse. And my, my sole reason was that I, I, was, I was frustrated because if one to 2% of the country pays taxes and 98% of them are actually living a life, this is not sustainable. So infrastructure, gas, electricity, I was in Karachi for about six, seven years. And trust me, folks, the negotiation I had to do with tankers at in the middle of the night at one, two, standing out in the street while making sure nobody comes and grabs me or picks me up on my mobile phone took uh, a lot of my head. So, yeah. So in short, I was I was not happy with the infrastructure, not happy with security, I was not happy with, with all the basic necessities of life that I believe that every single human deserves. And I still believe that Pakistan is a wonderful country and has lots of potential. But based on all of that, I was applying uh, across the across the world. I did some assessments. Uh, Canada, um, why Canada? I think I had an option to go to UK. I've got family there. I've got an option to go to Australia. My, my Mr. Trudeau, to be very honest, I was very inspired by the guy himself with how open he is to the external world. Secondly, it was Canada and the culture that the inclusive culture Canada has. You guys cannot even imagine. It's it's there. There are no Canadians and immigrants. There are no Canadians and non-Canadians. Like maybe you can say you're Australian and then you are someone else. So everyone is the same. Extremely diverse culture. Um, and I wanted to move to a part of the world that embraces diversity, that embraces different uh, thoughts, opinions, and somewhere where, you know, I can get a much better quality of life for myself and my kids. So I'm going to stop there. Of course, it's a long story, but that's the kind of initial thought process that I went through. Cool. Uh, thank you. So two reflections. One, I don't know if you've seen, there is this article which is roaming around on social media, LinkedIn, and I have it open in front of me. It says, salaried class pays nearly 200% more tax than exporters, retailers uh, in Pakistan. So again, this is more and more data comes out and kind of uh, reiterates what you're saying. Um, and second, with regards to Canada being inclusive, I can tell you now, given I'm in US, in US, there is some amount of pressure for being American. While you don't feel that in Canada, in Canada, you can be a Pakistani, Muslim, Canadian, you can be multiple things just in the same under the same flag, which is which is beautiful. And it's it's not even the case in Pakistan as well. In, even in Pakistan, there is a pressure of being Pakistani. But again, in Pakistan, everyone is Pakistani, so you don't really feel that pressure. But when you are moving countries in US is one example where you do feel the pressure of saying, I'm an American first before you are anything else. So uh, I, I really subscribe to the point you made there. Now, moving to the next question, which is, and let me give you some background. When I moved, it was a difficult decision for me. I was moving from Middle East, but I also moved in steps. Like my wife moved first. I made sure she finds a job. And then I moved after her. When people call me, I kind of advise the same to them as well, which is one of you should move, find a job, and then you have a salary running and then other can come. You're the first and one of the only person, maybe a few more showing up now, but you, you were one of those who I felt would be someone as similar as me in terms of making these decisions and taking the risk. But it turned out to be you're very different. You just went cold turkey. Uh, and you both of you didn't have jobs when you landed Canada, which is very scary for me. And I'm sure this is scary for others as well who, who are listening to this podcast. 
can you speak to how about how did you go about making that decision and how was it eventually it, it turned out well but how was the process i think it all goes back to the clarity in terms of your mind and the objective and goals you have in life so um and many many people question you uh, around this um if uh, i don't know if my my ex boss uh, would be listening to this podcast uh, but you know when i was in standard chartered i still remember the day my immigration came through the next morning i actually had my design team and it wasn't too far out from uh, the time when i was about to get a bonus as well um so in short um it was hard easy i i have held a belief in my life that you can't be in two boats at the same time i believe you need to have clarity of thought i i am guy who 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 believes that you you need to take leap of faith you need to uh you need to go back to your roots in terms of your belief that it's 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 the god almighty who actually holds the powers to to this entire fiasco of how where jobs are going to get in business earning etc so that belief was was firm core inside me and and be resigning and landing in canada without a job uh, did not bother me a lot the second thing was in terms of how we think so for me coming to canada there was sequence of of prioritized list of items of why and what kind of life would i have here so getting a decent job and making a career out of it was not at the top of the list the top of the list was i will land and i will find a decent place to live and i want to make sure that i get good quality of life for myself and children that was the base now so the career i was ready to work at say mortons or starbucks or anywhere or maybe start three levels down from wherever i left and i would have to define it because i came with the mindset in, in this western society in terms of saying there's nothing wrong with you taking few steps back if you want to grow and develop yourself I was lucky and we can talk about that about my my job how I landed but uh at the end of the day I think uh it just gets rooted back to your belief clarity of thought why you're moving your objectives and then you just go ahead with it. Yeah beautifully said one thing I would say and I, you mentioned and I would just say it differently I found that people who are who have been most successful in Canada or with immigration are those who were ready to just do anything to make it here uh and what i mean here is like i have friends who had very good careers and they would go like this is my priority i've decided i want to immigrate i will move my family and even if that means i'll have to sell pizzas here i will do that and when you come with that mindset it will never happen you'll you'll find a job here it's just a matter of time uh and some matter of some effort you'll you'll get there but once you have that mentality you will be able to get that first job and move up the ranks very fast because you have you are prepared for anything so that mentality i found very important because there's still some all the for instance if someone asks me how long does it take to get a job here i usually say it's 3 to 6 months maybe you have different experience but except if you have the right mindset if you don't have the right mindset and you come like oh i was this there and i was this th- th- that there and now i want something equally good or better then my friend it may take longer so yeah that's so, kind so of future exactly exactly hey here is here's another final point on that the reality that people don't are not willing to accept and the reality of life is that this is the biggest change management experience that you will ever go through trust me leaving your country going into a brand new country in the other part of the world entirely new systems right from the fact that do you need an id what kind of an id do you need where do you go the streets the roads environment every single thing it's like you are a newborn into the world in all most of the cases if you haven't been to that country so for me i had never traveled to canada ever before so when i came to the and uh, landed and came out of the airport and looked around that was the first time ever uh, uh so to your point where was absolutely i think it all boils down to your to your mindset how uh resilient you are um and and your creativeness i would say and if you have all the right components in there uh you will make it uh i, I don't want to put a time bar on that i've seen some people struggling for a longer time some some falling uh into jobs or any other initiatives earlier but that does not matter 
Um, the second point, and not to not to go too long on this, but the second point uh, is in terms of I've seen people who come here, and then they think about what they were or what they achieved in Pakistan. Now I don't want to be rude here, but before you compare yourself of your life in Pakistan versus in Canada, you need to compare both the countries as well. So if you made it into a country that has certain That's dynamics, and if you compare that with a country in the world that stands at a different ranking, you can imagine the kind of competition you'll get, and you can imagine that you might have to start from somewhere else and go up the ladder. There's no way if you were a regional head of yada yada in Pakistan, and now you will be regional head of America's yada yada out of the group. If that happens, I would question then U.S., Canada, Pakistan, all these countries are the same, which we know they are not, unfortunately, right? So, anyways, stop there. Now that's a, that's a beautiful point and uh, point that you made. I really like it. So, thank you. Uh, now let's start moving into your experience with regards to your job. So, I w- I want to touch on two things, and I'll break this question into two. So, the first part is how did you find your first job? How long did it take you? Uh, and what was the process? And then I'll ask a second question. Once you're done sharing this, is what are your advice for the new immigrants? But let's take the first one, which was your experience. So how did you find your first job? How long did it take you? What was the process? So I landed end of Jan, I still remember in 2017. And I was in a hotel room and uh, moved to an apartment uh, immediately. And uh, I still remember first week of February is when I started applying. LinkedIn was, was the only source, to be honest, to apply. And the funny story is many people still experience that. I'm sorry, when you go on LinkedIn, there's so many jobs. There are so many jobs that I looked at and I was like, oh my God, this is like a piece of the cake and I got it. And I applied to, I don't know, 60, 70 places. And I never heard back. And I was like, what's wrong with me? But here's, here's the interesting thing. There's nothing wrong with me. The question is, you're competing in, in a, a pool of candidates that fall into different categories. One is people like myself, who just landed and are excited, made their CV, and now are applying. The second category is people who landed before me could not land a job and are still applying. The third category is people who landed before me and the other party and are doing something that they do not like or that may not be aligned with their skill set or field. One year, two years, they are still in the ranks to apply for those good jobs and good organizations. And the fourth ones are Canadians like people who are working in different organizations already and not the immigrants who are all applying. So 400, 500 average applications for one. Do you really think that anybody has time to review each and every single CV across the board? The answer is no. So that would happen to me. And it was it was a sticker shock that I got to learn over time. But anyways, coming back to the story. So I applied 60, 70 places and I was frantically checking my emails where I never heard back from anyone. Um, so how I landed a job, then soon someone guided me and said, look, you need to you need to find people, connections who work in good organizations, who can at least give a referral. And referral, and be very careful in using the word, referral in Canada really means someone who can help you put your foot in the door, someone who knows that you're capable and competent enough and can put their name behind your resume and can actually, your, your CV can make it to the table of the hiring manager, which in itself out of 500 applicants is tough. And don't forget, those 400 to 500 average applications are only external. Well, any single job that you see that comes out on the internet is also advertised within these organizations. And the organizations are massive. Here. And I want to give perspective to people here. I used to work with Standard Chartered Bank, which was a great, great organization. But remember, it was Pakistan. We had about 3,000, 3,500 people. You're talking about banks like RBC, TD, Scotia, BMO. You look at their employee workforce, you're talking about 60,000 people only in Canada. So you can imagine the scale we're talking about. So within these organizations, all these jobs that you fancy and you look at LinkedIn are also advertised internally. And and there's tons and tons of growth and development within these organizations and opportunities that people move around, which is awesome. So you're competing with like a gazillion people. Coming back to the point, uh, how how I got the job, I, I applied, of course, as for the process. I did know someone at TD who used to work with me at Center Chartered Bank back home. And I said, look, I mean, if you can put, you know, a referral or at least refer me to the hiring manager, 
So the person did, the person told me clearly, the way it works in TD and Canada at large is, I can only forward your CV with a recommendation saying this is a good profile, I know this person, it would be great for you to consider. And then after that, nobody's going to come back to me as such, or I wouldn't know what happens. If they consider you, they consider you. It's the only one. I said, absolutely, that's all I need. So long story short, my profile reached to the hiring manager, uh, and I'm, I'm very grateful um, that she, she looked at the profile and she liked the profile on paper. The talent acquisition uh, team reached out to me. We had a good 45 minute conversation. I did prepare well. I made a case very clearly aligned with what they were looking for. And um, from there, I had a series of five interviews over a period of five weeks. And I got the job as a senior manager. And that's where I started off at TD, which was, which I mean, I was, uh, I was not expecting. Uh, but I think I did go into these conversations with a very positive attitude and I, 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 I was just myself and all the great experiences that I've had in the past. But I'm very grateful to the hiring team at TD Bank, all my senior VPs and SVPs who took that stigma away of the guy has no Canadian experience, you know, all this crap that we listen. I don't believe in that. I think regardless of Canadian experience or not, if you have the right kind of experience, global experience, and if you are able to articulate that in the form of examples, answering the right questions, making a mark, all these great organizations like TD, they 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 understand that and they get that. And if you if, if they're meeting you, if, if they're having a conversation with you in a room, I think I think that's all you need. And then things start to happen. And that's how I landed within um, seven weeks. Uh, I got an offer, so I find myself very lucky, I would say. That's very nice. Yeah, indeed, indeed it's good. Uh, you you call it lucky. I think there is some uh, good hard work there as well. So that's nice and good. Some some good strategies. Now coming to the strategies. Let's say I'm a new immigrant. I just come in. We are friends. I can give you a call and say, how do I go about getting a job in Canada? I just moved here um, last week and I'm looking. What are the tips that you would give me as a new immigrant coming from Pakistan looking for a job here? So I would say, number one, um, and some of them are table stakes, folks, but of course, by those you asked a question, so, you know, I'm going to share those, but I expect people coming from Pakistan, working in different organizations in this day and age would know all of this, okay? Most of this, if not all. So number one, uh, you need to make sure that you have a decent profile on LinkedIn because that's the only formal platform that we have professionally. So I'm sure you have that. I'm sure you know how to make a good resume. I have people reaching out to me in terms of making sure that they can have a Canadian resume uh, versus not Canadian, etc. I'm not an expert in that. I just made sure that I looked at different profiles and make the best out of it uh, in terms of a resume. So yes, the second thing is have a good solid resume that speaks to your achievements and less about the tasks and activities. And I, I um, talk more about in the profile uh, short, articulate, sweet in terms of what value have you added to these organizations over time? Um, what were the outcomes that you achieved and how you delivered them? So something of that nature, short, articulate. So uh, LinkedIn is number one. Uh, having a profile, number two. Making sure that you have the premium account on LinkedIn because many, many hiring leaders um, are on premium. So you would require in-mail. Uh, to reach out to them. Uh, number four, when you reach out to them, uh, make sure you are you 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 are very um, concise. I would say in terms of your message, nobody's going to read a whole story. I've I've received emails with people of saying, uh, "My name is X Y Z, and I used to live in yada yada," and there's a whole freaking story of all the great experiences they had. You know, it's like that the the stuff that I really hate personally that whole cover letter concept that we have and we still have in the government sector that whole long story so they mentioned that nobody's going to read that okay so um be very concise in terms of your message uh, try and see if you can grab an opportunity to speak to uh, make a connection speak to the person have a coffee chat some way or the other try to make a, uh, an impact through that very brief communication you have so that the person is willing to connect with you, or at least you find a way in of someone who can who can uh, forward your profile. Um, 
um, you do that and then uh, don't pester i would say people if somebody's not responding just do one maximum follow up if not don't send a second one people hate it i hate it personally if i'm not interested to respond for any god uh, forsaken reason you follow up kindly and if still you don't hear just move on with your life okay so there's a whole world out there uh, just don't keep messaging people with question marks saying can you respond can you respond because if you're going to piss me off there's no way you're making a connection uh, so uh, these are some of the tactics and then and then we can talk more about when you go into the interviews and i know that Rose, you've got some amazing videos on that so i think you should leave finance and join hr this is what i would say to you so i think the kind of uh, strategy tips and recommendations you've given to your listeners around interviewing techniques and all that concept of making the mark in the first few minutes i'm not going to repeat that here i think you you are an equal expert in that but yeah so some of these things i think you need to do again have faith folks if you if you've got tons of money fine relax chill apply and wait for the right opportunity if you're struggling like i was struggling as well at the end of the day uh, i come from a very humble background um just we can go out and do something i mean if applying on linkedin does not mean that you sit all day long looking at your laptop and just waiting for something to happen because you just you're just wasting time so do all the applications and all the jobs that you love and want to be in but then at the end of the day just start working go and drive an uber i would say that will give you a lot of experience just go around meet people work somewhere uh start getting some uh, some exposure to the canadian world you learn a lot with interaction with people and you know i mean some dollars coming into the house is not going to hurt it's going to help you at least run your kitchen for the time being uh, to beros's point it does take if i was to generalize uh, a timeline it goes various greatly from one person to another but yeah 3 to 6 months is a minimum time frame you should keep in mind but if you're someone who's going to sleep all day or get frustrated with why aren't the organization responding trust me they for them like few months here and there in terms of budgets approvals positions hiring etc is no big deal for you every single day matters so go out do something worthwhile with your life when you land in canada throw away all the clichés that you have from back home uh forget about what others say the community you move in or friends or family you have here come in the next day go and find a job <laughs> do something worthwhile and continue applying for the green job uh that you have in mind cool thank you i i would just say one thing uh you talked about change management with regards to moving to canada and resilience and all you know what I, there are there have been instances where i even use that card uh where I, when I'm in an interview or I'm applying, I use that card that yes, I don't have the Canadian experience, but I have the resilience of moving a continent. And if you add on top of this, this like going for Uber or taking some uh, part-time roles or uh, no unpaid roles, if you add all of that up in your resume as well, people may think, oh, this is too small to put on my resume, but you can always use that as resilience. Uh, that i was so resilient i was ready to make a change i changed continents i was looking for a job couldn't find it and this is how i started i'm ready to do anything that will take me up back or back to the place where i started so i think that all of that helps and i played that to my benefit and people can also play that to their benefit as well a uh, 100% i just could not agree more and there's one thing i want to uh, share with your listeners here the beauty of countries like canada is the lower level you are and i don't mean degrading in any way i said lower level i'm talking about the hierarchy in the society in terms of jobs so if you're driving a taxi if you're working at at any of these food stores or in a mall so all i'm saying is in the hierarchy uh, from our perspective worldly lens the lower you are at the end of the day the more respected you are so to bear us to what you're saying uh, i was more than happy uh to share my experience um with them of saying because they do ask as to okay how was your experience of learning in canada what have you been doing over the past few months and if you say oh, all i was doing was getting frustrated and looking out for jobs that's not a good experience i would love to say to them that you know i was head of uh, xyz back home canada is a new country and to your point the resilience change management this is the best example you can give and it is i mean it's not it's not that you're trying to fake it but this is it 
I mean, people don't even leave one city in their entire life. You have changed continents and you've taken the biggest risk of your of your life, especially if you're coming with your family and kids. I mean, how big of a change management test you can you can actually go through. So, you know, absolutely. I think I think these experiences of 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 all these odd jobs, I would say, or ad hoc jobs, uh, add value to your conversation and shows that how 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 strong a personality you have. Thank you, Kasim. Yes. Uh, so, I like you said that uh, you can also impart a lot of suggestions and tips on interview taking. And you know what? We'll have to book a separate session for that. But there's one last thing I want to cover in this session because I don't want to hold you more than the time uh, you granted. So, thank you for that. Which is while I talked about your success in Canada, getting a job, uh, mashallah, so fast uh, and all. There's another piece as well, which was also going up the ranks uh, in Canada. So that's another piece where if there is anything that you can share, especially if that might be different from what we experience in terms of our careers in South Asia, would be nice to know if there are any tips or tricks that you can impart with regards to growing, going up the ranks and growing in the company and driving your career. It's a, it's, it's a loaded question, by the way. Right. I mean, one could argue, and your listeners may be thinking as well, there could be a gazillion ways of how one could may move up. So I'll try to just be concise and share my experience. So I've been with with this great organization, TD, for about six years now. Like I said, this is my seventh year. So the, for the first three years, I was a senior manager, and then I moved to the executive skater as the AVP. Um, I think a couple of things that I always coach and I still coach some of the Wisman community, especially that we have, um, is that once you're into an organization, right? So then you are you are in that battlefield to compete all around. Now, what do I mean when I say compete? Competition in this world, especially Canadian culture and environment, now organizations operate, is has to do a lot with how you collaborate and how you work well along with your peers, people up the chain and people down the chain. Um, your communication skills are very important. Your competence level is very important. But above all, it's how much you adapt to the culture and values of the organization, how much value you add around uh, in, in the life of the people that work around you, how much value do you add or contribute to the larger community? All these factors are very, very important in making a person of who, who you are. And over the years, you you show this uh, through different assignments and projects. And and like I said earlier, you have to come out of that mindset, especially when you're coming from from Pakistan. And I shared a very clear example: Standard Charter, which was which was big for me back then, had 3,000, 3,500 employees. And we said, this is like a massive organization. And now I'm in a pool organization that has 96,000 employees. So you need to open up your minds. You need to, you need to have a, a, a new, a, a more improved uh, um, set of capabilities, I would say, especially compared to the country and, and the region that we come from. And in, in this world, competition, like I said, not the cost of repetition, is not trying to put someone down or trying to make sure that you just beat everyone to win. Winning in this environment means everybody wins. So the organization wins, the enterprise wins. So you have to take everyone along. That is the key, regardless of the outcome. So I think that really helped me to move from one level to the level that I'm at. Beautiful. Uh, thank you, Kasim. And given you said it's a loaded question, I am sure there are more stuff that you can impart here. So probably we'll book a separate session for that, uh, both interview and how to uh, grow and ace in your career. One last question before we end, which is racism. Have you witnessed any racism or heard of, or what would how do you how would you react to someone saying, Canada, there is systematic racism. They won't hire you. They won't promote you, and all that. So I don't. I assume your answer would be no, given you've, you've been on the bright side, but I'm sure you've seen or heard a lot as well. So any thoughts on that? I think the amount of focus that organizations have and the country at large and the government has on diversity and, and the strategies to address any kind of systemic uh, uh, racism, so to speak, uh, gives me an idea or a very strong feeling that exists. 
Now you ask me a question personally, it hasn't happened to me, I'll be very honest. And I think I just find myself lucky at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, through news and other experiences that I hear, people do believe that yes, uh, there is an element that exists. But here's the thing. Again, this is again going back to my Pakistani audience who may be thinking about all of this and coming there. One, I am very confident in saying I've traveled to many, many countries around the world. I think if I was to have a bar chart, when we say racism in Canada, I would say it really, really low uh, compared to many other places. Second, where, wherever there are humans, and I don't want to sound philosophical, but that's the reality, folks. Wherever humans are, biases exist. So, and that, and, and like I said at the start, we are the product of our own experiences. Don't we have these, these issues in a country where there are no immigrants? So I was not an immigrant back home in Pakistan, but we, we have different kind of, uh, um, racism, you would say, uh, different levels of society of how people treat each other, different provinces, different languages, tons of diversity within a very close society that we believe everybody's Pakistani, everybody's a Muslim, and we all were born there. So keeping all of that in mind, coming here, I, 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 think, I think that um, it, it may exist across the board, but I never had it on the top of my head. So I would recommend to you guys, that is least of your worries when you come to Canada. Just be who you are, be a nice person, uh, be collaborative. And I'm not talking about organization only, in the society as well. How many times I've said sorry and and thank you and appreciations across when I deal with communities here. I haven't said that in my entire life, whatever, 35, 40 years back home. So some of those things I think really help and uh, rest, yeah, everybody has their own story to tell, to be honest. Thank you, Kasim. This this was wonderful. Uh, amazing engagement from your side and uh, great tips and suggestions. And your story is is like amazing. I, I as I said, I've, I've shared this with many other friends and families as well. And I thought it would be nice to just bring you on the channel and get to hear from you directly. So thank you for your time. Uh, where can people reach out to you if they have any questions regarding your story, regarding the things you've shared? So. Uh... I'm not a very highly active social media person, I would say. I know the world has moved on. Uh, but yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. So if anyone wants to reach out, feel free to reach out. I'll, uh, I'll be happy to guide, coach you guys to the extent possible. You will get the real deal for me, though. So please don't expect uh, anything different. Um, um, and I am on Facebook, but I'm not, I, I don't use Facebook anymore. And the other forums are just like, I think the left. I only go to social media, especially Instagram and all those activities uh, as the last thing in my life. Uh, when I've got nothing useful to do, then I go and see what the world is all about. But <laughs> oh, no, rest, that's nice. uh, I've got that. <laughs> Makes sense. No, I'll leave the link to your uh, LinkedIn uh, in the description of this video. And again, thank you. This was just wonderful, amazing uh, uh, thoughts and uh, inputs from you. So thanks for your time. Awesome. And I really, really appreciate that. My last comment to all your listeners is, folks, um, just uh, do, just you, all you have to do is have to take the first step in terms of making sure your dreams come true. If coming to Canada is one of your dreams, uh, all I can say to you is good luck and give it your best shot. It's a brand new life and uh, just go ahead. And uh, you can do, we all can do wonders regardless of our background and where we come from. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. All right. That's it.